What is up, YouTube? Yeah, it's raining, but that don't stop me. Yeah, I got the uh, canopy up over the cooker, and today's gonna be the first day that I'm gonna do ribs on this cooker. I can't say it's the first cook, because I cooked some chicken on the deal yesterday, and it came out awesome. Now, I do wanna share with you some of the things I did to my uh, cooker, um, and these are just suggestions. And this is adult education take put whatever you want in your middle two box and you can disregard whatever you don't want to put in your middle two box but check and this out one thing i just want to suggest and uh this goes to everybody anybody that's checking this video out when it comes to a cooker make sure you get what you really want now i've always been curious about pellet cookers but i didn't want to fork out a whole lot of money on something that i may not like or not um pleased with the uh outcome or the product that was coming off of i just didn't want to risk that kind of money because i've always had my heart set on the austin xl ever since that thing came in existence i i seen it i love the features and benefits it offer i love the size of it i love the, the color everything about that cooker but i just didn't want to pay six hundred dollars for a grill that i wasn't sure i was gonna like um so Long story short, I bought that uh, pellet grill from Sam's Club. Got it for um, a lot less than I would have paid for the Austin. And, uh, but I did use that as my, pretty much as my trainer and my educator in the art of uh, using pellet cookers. Um, come to really appreciate it. Um, come to actually love it. I love the convenience that it offers. Um, especially when it comes to barbecuing, um, the fact that I don't have to babysit a fire um, to uh, do some barbecue. Um, they're going out every 45 minutes to add a stick. Um, that, you know, I'd be in a mood for that. You know, if it's like a day like today, you won't go out in the rain playing with a fire, and then you got the issues that may come up in order to uh, maintain your heat so you can maintain your cooking time that the pellet cooker took all that away and i i greatly appreciate it there was other little gadgets you could buy to put on your your offset and all that you know that ah nah mm -mm. the pellet cooker took took all that away um especially with the advancements they made with these cookers i tell you I, i'm a fan fan for life yeah i'm a stick burner i got a big 330 gallon smoker reverse flow smoker on a trailer that's my mainstay that's the heart of my business but when i'm at home like today i'm gonna fire up some ribs i can chill i i don't ha i don't have to work at it it's hey it's so convenient it's almost like it's like having a gas grill turn it on the only difference is i can set the temperature you know you can do that with a gas grill too but and with this technology is now, <laughs> I could turn it off from my phone. I mean, that's lazy, all right? Nah. It's convenience, you know. I don't say that about people that own Teslas, you know. I, hey, that's next on my list, too. I, I like that self-drive mode. That's lazy, no. It's convenient. <laughs> Be able to let, let, the, let the machine do it. I trust it. it if it wasn't going to be safe, they wouldn't allow them on the road. So uh, that's a different story, different argument. But back to the pellet game. Get what you really want. Here I am, three years later, I finally bought what I really wanted. It's not the Austin XL. It is pretty much the same grill. Different colors, different label, different name. I, I understand the game. And I, I used to work in the retail industry. I started right out of college, worked for a, a shoe company, sold sneakers. And we had our exclusive sneakers, you know, that it was the same shoe, but we had exclusive colors. But that shoe was available at other retail establishments, but we had our own color. That particular color was only exclusive to my company. And that's how these, um, these grills are, you know, at the heart of it, you got a PID controller that's doing awesome work and you got a, a uh, cook chamber that you put the food in um, this is the Austin XL same size just 
this one offers a little bit just a smidge more space but at the end of the day it's the same grill uh but i like the, the bells and whistles of the new technology so but get off that horse get off that soapbox folks get what you really want you're going to be much much happier with your cooker and with your purchase you will not find yourself buying uh gadgets and doodads to make you do what the other cooker would have done if you just bought it i made i, I did that so and i don't want I hate to see somebody else go through that, spend that kind of cash. The money I spent just on those added doodads and gadgets, put it with the price, purchase price of the cooker. That was my Austin XL all day long. But now I got the, uh, it's, uh, this is exclusive to Lowe's. This is the uh, Pro Series. This is a Pro Series 2, the 1150 Pro Series 2. Um, Outside of the uh, putting the uh, gasket, um, I'm calling it a gasket, but the uh, material on the lid. All right, first side of my business, I went ahead and put um, some gasket material on here. It's not lava lock. It's it's similar to lava lock. It's, I purchased this uh, when I finished my brother's uh, cooker, so I did that to help um, seal up the uh, cook chamber and it worked awesome. I also took a piece, this is lava lock. Um, you know, why don't you use that and have enough to do the whole deal? I want it all to be color matching, so that's why I didn't use lava lock on the, on the lid. But I did take a piece and put it on here so that when the lid is open, I'm not scratching the paint off of it. And you know, I'm just trying to protect the surface. All right, with the hopper. What's cool, you got storage, just like in my uh, in the Brunswick. Offer storage, onboard storage, this is cool. You got a designated place you can keep your, your probes so they stay sanitary, sanitized, and um, you don't have to worry about them getting damaged or anything like that. Um, also, now, to the hopper. Wood pellet cookers, the way the hoppers are designed, they got them designed where the stuff's supposed to flow to the auger, but they don't always flow properly because the pellets don't always lay the same way. And it depends on the type of pellets that you're using would dictate how the pellets are gonna fall into this groove for to be fed into the auger. Now, on the uh, big Brunswick, the vertical smokers, whether it's the Brunswick or the three series that I had, um, I found that the, the pellets would drain down a certain way and I had to take a, a yardstick, reach through the grates and usher the, the pellets to where they need to go. I call it tossling. On that um, members mark cooker, I took the grate off because you can see where the fastener is going to to the grate. They come in and come into there and, that, and this thing is like stuck. So what I did was I removed the fasteners, all right? And I put a nut on the fastener so I can just rest this back on there. I don't know, uh, it's, I know why it's here, is to keep people from getting injured and, and, and it shields the company, the manufacturer from a suit and somebody hurting themselves. So they've done their due diligence to make it safe. I know I deactivated the surf safety feature in, a, in per se, but it's still here, still doing its thing as protecting. So I got a young granddaughter, if she was to come up and see it, all she would see is this, if she happen to open it uh, that she would but as uh, long as she doesn't see that this comes out it's still going to be safe now what i do during the cooking process this is where it looked after it was done with my last cook and get the shelf up here i'm going to show you that shelf now what I do during the cooking process, when I see that little dent right there, I notice that I, I, I've had flame outs because the uh, cooker got fuel starved. You need to come and check your your um, your hopper or your fuel um, periodically. It's just wise to do that. I remember I was doing uh, brisket and um, 
this is when I first, you know, on the members mark, I, that's why I started doing this because I didn't pay attention to the, the hopper and it had a much smaller hopper. It was like a little 10 pound hopper on there. By the way, this one's 32 pounds. Um, I didn't check it. It was fuel starved and I, and I had to go through the starter procedure and all that. And uh, what I do during the cooking process, I just take, this is what I call tossing the pellets. There's probably another name for it, but this is what I call tossing. I move the stuff to where it's gonna feed down and I periodically check it. All right, now, today I'm gonna fire up some ribs. These pellets I bought from Bear Mountain. This is the bold and smoky uh, blend here. I'm gonna pull, get these out and uh, I'm gonna use the, uh, they got a cherry blend that I purchased and that's gonna be used to smoke them ribs. And we're gonna go a different direction with the ribs. This ain't gonna be a standard, you know, um, Memphis or um, Kansas City style rib. I'm, I'm gonna jerk these bad boys today and I'm gonna show you how to do it quick and easy without having to go through the long process or the tedious process of getting your jerk uh, um, sauce together um, from scratch. I do make it uh, from scratch, but I'm gonna show you a quick and easy way to get to where you wanna go quickly and have nice, um, good results. Now back to the cooker. The, um, to uh, change the pellets, this device right here, you just undo the knob and pull it out then you have to remove this cap and then have your device, whatever you're gonna catch it in, um, catch the pellets. I'm gonna not fool with that because I don't like this this cap here. I'm gonna show you. You pull that out, see these little ridges here? Over time, those are gonna break off and this cap is not gonna stay in its place. It's kinda loose now. And I've only pulled that off once, so. I'm not gonna fool with that personally. I'm going back and use my bucket head. And you're gonna ask, what's a bucket head? I'll show you. All right, this my friends is the bucket head. I did introduce you guys to this. Um, this was the second video I made on my channel. It's called After the Cook. And um, basically all the bucket head is, is a shop vac that sits on top of a five gallon bucket, snaps on, Put the hose on it. You gotta put it on this end where the switch is. You gotta vacuum. Put it on this end, opposite of the switch. You got a blower. And it's awesome little deal. And what I do is um, this help. I use the buckets to store the various flavors of pellets. Um, I know that you know, you're like, man, that's crazy. You're gonna have all these buckets. That's me. That's just how I I do. I don't wanna put them back in the bag because the thing you want to do is maintain the integrity of the pellets so they don't get any moisture this um the lids for the um the buckets do have a gasket on them so it does keep them dry keep them sealed up you know pretty much like a container on your counter that keeps flour or, um baking soda or whatever you have in storage in in the house this is awesome for the garage. This makes it quick and simple. So I'm gonna get those pellets out, get the cherries in, and we'll go back to talking about the cooking. YouTube and give you a, a look at what it looks like after you pulled out your pellets. See that? That was a 20 pound bag of pellets. And I'm pretty much going to leave them in this bucket. And as I said before, and I'll show you the, the lid. You can see on the lid the gasket that goes all the way around the lid there. Put it on the top of the bucket. Keeps your pellets dry. So next time you need to use them. All right, you two, back to the cooker. One thing I want to point out, this screw right here, don't move that, take it out. Leave it there, it has a function. 
its function is now that I um, cleaned out the hopper I'm gonna take and undo that deal there you gotta unscrew let me get around here so you can see it okay you gotta unscrew the deal till um, it releases and once it does you can pull this out that screw is a stop all right because if you take that screw out you're going to pull this whole thing out there's no need to pull it out all you need is just enough to open that up to release the pellets into the chute and that little plastic cap that i showed you earlier is the um, cap for the chute so you um it's up to you how you want to use that i showed you what i did much quicker more efficient less of a mess because you got to figure how and where you're gonna hold your bucket or container and with the vertical smoker it was very difficult so um yeah i did use shot back on the vertical smoker and um just that's my two cents on that and um more regards to the um, PID controller um, there apparently there's two uh, production runs with this cooker um, this particular one as you can see my IT is solid so it's connected to the network now the uh, earlier you got an earlier production run you got a later production with run. the earlier production run the um, doesn't allow you the incremental 10 degree uh, advancements in the temperature setting. It's like having the old school one where you have 200, 250, no 275, it just jumps up to 300, then it goes 350, 400, no 375, no in between. So um, I'm gonna get with the uh, pit boss and see how they can update my PID controller if I have to pull it send it out so be it I'd rather have the more control of my temperature and not be uh, stuck with what this thing is uh, like I said I've been wanting this bad boy for a long time not this particular one but the one of this size and I have it and I'm very very happy um, and we're gonna I'm gonna open up the cook chamber and uh, we're gonna talk about that too all right folks the cook chamber um, you can see this is the mess from um, when I did the chicken and I found I try to clean my grill grates off while they're hot. <clears throat> um, the one thing I didn't do on this uh, when I did the burn off is um, I did not coat the inside with cooking spray like I normally do. You can see that um, because um, it was very it was coated very heavily with the um with the shipping coating that they put on there to keep the parts from tarnishing or oxidizing so i wanted that stuff completely cooked out i actually uh the book only recommends a 30 to 40 minute um burn off at 350 degrees i let that thing go for a couple of hours at 350 because i really wanted that stuff burned out of there the um greased uh, uh, shield here um, it was really heavily coated I actually had to take a towel and get a lot of that stuff off because I didn't even want it in my cooker so I wiped as much of it off as possible so you see what I did here I put some foil on here um, what I'm gonna do um, when I go to uh, preheat this cooker I'm gonna coat everything with the cooking spray now that it's safe i feel it's safe to do that you can see how everything looks i'm going to coat it with the cooking spray and the reason why i did the uh, foil let me show you this makes this is much easier to do this than to be sitting here trying to figure out when and how i was going to clean this thing off so I'm gonna get this foil pulled, and then um, uh, on the foil. Um, when you use the um, the wide roll of foil, it's big enough to cover both uh, grease rant, uh, grooves here. 
Um, but I'm gonna use two sheets. That way, everything's completely covered. Um, let me get this foil off so I can show you the other features of this um, diffuse, um, grease tr uh, tray here. Be right back. All right, folks, we're back into the cook chamber here. Some cool things, cool features. You can see that they listened to, or somebody at Pit Boss watched some videos where people have made this modification themselves. But this is a factory deal where you got a handle here that you can just manipulate. There it is, it doesn't move very far, but just enough to open that up so you can have access to the, um, the fire coming up through the vents and you can sear meat if you will, or if you want to. Um, another thing, they took into consideration how to disengage this device in order to clean this if you don't cover it with foil. Highly recommend the foil thing, just lift that up and this will come out and all you have to do is remove it out of the, out of the hole there um, and the reason why I just draped the foil over is because of this device here I didn't want any holes in the foil where grease can get down like that you know that's why I'm gonna go with two sheets to help keep it clean I wanted it to stay clean like this but it's cool it makes that cleaning that up is a lot easier than cleaning this whole thing and trying to scrape all that burnt on stuff off. You don't want that in your food, you know, future cook. So what I'm gonna do is coat this inside here with um, with some canola. And then we're gonna uh, preheat this bad boy, get it ready to do these ribs. And as um, far as uh, features, oh yeah, let me uh, show you the shelf here. Give me one moment. All right, all right the shelf, what's well, cool. In the past, this was an add-on feature that you had to purchase. Real nice. Lift up, raise it, boom, there you go. Um, it's cool to have something to rest it on, but if it was just, I would say maybe two inches longer, be perfect for uh, any size pan, but uh, you gotta be mindful if you have a really large pan you're gonna to have to make sure you hold it and so it don't flip off the uh, shelf but as far as shelves go you got the top of the hopper that you can use which I did I had um, my seasonings set up on here I have a little table that I always use when I'm cooking you probably seen it seen it in previous videos but yeah it's my little fold up table so I can have a little extra um, room to work and not be uh, just whatever the uh, cooker yields to me. Um, and you also got a side shelf here. It's cool where you can hang your tools. Um, and it's, it's pretty stout. Um, also, the stack. Control the, uh, the exhaust there. You got a nice shelf on the bottom. And uh, what's cool, just like these uh, holes that are pre-drilled, that's for if you do leave your cooker outside and water pools, these are drain holes. Same thing on the bottom. I noticed those when I was assembling it. Um, nice rubber tires, nice uh, casters in the front, um, also with brakes. And it's cool that you have casters on the front. You don't have to lift and pull. You can just... Uh, Pull this bad boy wherever you want it but we're gonna get this thing uh fired up and we're gonna go in um first i'm gonna foil this get this foiled then we're gonna get this baby um preheated so we can get them ribs going and i'll be back all right as i stated before i'm gonna fill the hopper with the uh bear mountain cherry uh flavor pellets here to do these ribs, I love cooking with cherry in my stick burner and in my UDS and also um, in my Weber. So um, uh, I want to see how they turn out with these uh, cherry pellets here. Uh, I know Pit Boss makes uh, cherry as well, but these this was a Christmas gift. Uh, and I'm going to take advantage of the gift of somebody's kind heart who blessed me with these pellets. So I'm going to put them to work cooking those uh, ribs. And you can see. So it can go well with poultry, seafood, lamb, pork, and beef as well. But 
today we're doing the pork, them ribs. We're gonna get it, get the hopper filled and get her fired. All right, up. as you can see, before I put the pellets in, you see I didn't uh, suck out all the pellets out of the um, the feed to the auger for the simple fact um, this will leave my cooker primed and ready for uh, cooking, and I gotta wait for it to feed pellets all the way through. Um, I'd rather burn these up during the preheating uh, process than to burn up my cherry. Just a thought, food for thought. No pun intended. We're gonna get this bad boy filled and get it going. All right, folks, forgot to show you one other cool feature. The uh, In the past with the uh, pellet cookers, you had to break out the shop back to clean out the um, fire cup. It's cool, undo this latch slide it there you go look at that so much nicer to do that get this bad boy empty and we'll be right back all right YouTube just want to show you something the um because uh if you don't pay attention to this you struggle like I did before I figured it out you got grooves on the um burner pot apparatus there and then and there's a groove right there that those uh, side things or rails go into get it all the way up past you see the bottom of the groove of the rails get it past the rails then you can shift it towards the uh, hopper and then you can latch it for a while I struggled couldn't get that to work and then had to take a step back Take a deep breath and pay attention to what was going on. And it's perfect so that this uh, gasket make a good seal. All right, we're gonna get it back on and get it fired up. All right, to show you what I was talking about in regards to my uh, PID controller. To set the temp, see how it starts off 200, the other one starts off at 180. And then from 200, 225, 250, 300, 350, 400, 450, and so on. I want to be able to control it uh, in increments of uh, 10 degrees, just like on the, uh, the Brunswick. So I'll be uh, contacting Pit Boss to see how we can get that resolved. But other than that, everything works great. Notice my IT um, is uh, solid, it's connected to the network. Just like with the Brunswick, once you connect it to the network, you name it and uh, set a password for this particular cooker. And um, you go into settings and uh, put in your Wi-Fi credentials. And once the um, cooker's connected, it'll make its adjustments and, and it's connected to the network. And then you have control over it as long as you're connected to the network. It's really nice. And also, what's really neat about this uh, PID controller, there are inputs for four probes. That is incredible. That is really incredible. And then you got a recipe mode and this prime. The, the thing I uh, noticed about the prime, I was, and when you depress the prime and hold it, you'll hear the auger turn and then keep in mind, the auger is not going to turn very fast. It's just going to turn at a very slow pace and it's going to take a minute for um, the pellets to reach the cup. Um, so be patient with that and also when you hold it, it's only going to turn for a certain period of time and stop. You got to take your finger off and then press prime again. You know, like I said, just be patient. It eventually get um, pellets to the cup and then uh, you'll be off and rocking and rolling. But um, yeah, I will be contacting Pit Boss about how to uh, get uh, my PID controller updated and I'll let you guys know on um, what they said and how it's gonna be done. But other than that, we're gonna get on with this cook. Um, Preheating this bad boy 250. Um, and we're gonna go from there. St. Louis style ribs. All right, YouTube, I'm gonna show you a little pro tip. Yeah, I used one of these uh, steel uh, grill brushes go at it on my uh, grill grates everybody knows the danger with those they can break off 
the stick. This is only with the, um, it's more likely with the expanded metal. And this is what these grill grates are. It's a ceramic coated expanded metal, if you will. And uh, here's the pro tip. Where is one from my, my pops with the uncle and stuff. This is the same paper we would wrap our ribs in or brisket, whatever. Take some of that. Let's go up the grill grate. That right there will get rid of them broke off pieces of, uh, of that grill brush. Just go over your um, grill brush real good. There's a work on them uh, home custom made grills that have expanded metal grates. That top I didn't use it on here, but I'm going to clean that grill right off. We'll get our meat on, but we'll be back. All right, YouTube has been two hours. Um, we're into the going into the third hour of the cook, and this is what I was talking about. Let me get this out of the way. You see, I'm not just taking move the pellets over that way I don't run the risk of them being running running out of pellets kind of difficult to do that with that um, garden way you'd have to find some kind of tool or something to uh, get that same job done it's a little time consuming when you're trying to work through those little holes but yeah that makes it a lot easier now let's take a look at the ribs. Like I said, it's been two hours. Went into the third hour and they look magnificent. We're gonna give them a spritz. Man, that looks awesome. All of this fans are working with that shelf in the way. You can't really hit them like you want. You're gonna have to do some moving. But other than that, they are looking fabulous. Using the cherry pellets. They are looking delish. We're gonna add a few things here. When I say a few, we're gonna add some four pepper sausage links. And some corn on the top. Yes, indeed. And we will do that. We're at the point now where the ribs are wrapped. Um, this is the uh, jerk uh, sauce that I that I really like. It's by KC Masterpiece. I went to two locations today and could not find it. So, in the place today, you can see it's gone. We love that stuff. It's great on chicken and ribs. We've done it on ribs. So, Buffalo Wild Wings make uh, and sell sauces in uh, local retailers. Uh, found this at Walmart. And I did taste it, it tastes pretty close, but I would say the casing masterpiece does have the uh, the, the, Carib the jerk flavor to it, as far as the uh, allspice and all that, it tastes great. The only thing that it's missing, we're gonna do to get that heat factor, this stuff is hot. So I would caution you to be, you know, I don't know, whatever your level of heat that you can stand, would dictate how much it is to use. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna brush the ribs with this. And I'm just gonna go with a few drops of this stuff. I like my stuff hot, but not so hot where I can't enjoy it. That stuff is, that stuff is hot. So we're gonna get the uh, ribs out of the foil. There's our corn. And we're gonna let them go. 30 minutes with the sauce so that sauce will tack up and we're going to go from there. We'll be back. Yeah, YouTube just wanted to show you. I had to run it at 300 because when I set it at 250 we would not maintain 250 we just dropped down to 200. So I had to run it at 300 so I'm hoping the good folks at Pit Boss can take care of my PID controller. Brother than that, let me give you a look at these ribs. Let you get a look at them. Yes, indeed. Next time you see these, we'll be cutting them up so we can see what that smoke ring looks like. We'll be back.
Well, it speaks for itself, folks. Them cherry pellets did wonders for these ribs. Look at that deep smoke ring. Didn't even flip them. Penetration top and bottom. Check out this pan of goodness. Boy, I cannot wait to get these babies plated up and get my teeth sunk into these sweet, succulent, funky ribs. Check out this plate, mac and cheese, four pepper sausage, green veggies, corn on a cob, and of course, these sweet, succulent, funky ribs. That's going to do it for us for this episode, folks. Thanks for checking us out. Be sure to come back and see which one we're going to fire up. Is it going to be Big Tasty or is it going to be just fantastic? And we wish you much success on your next cook. And hey, let's keep them pits. Burning!